If you feel like the way that I feel, I, I think you, we all realize that the world is a very scary place right now. It's also very confusing and very complicated with so many different perspectives, so many different positions, and so many different opinions. Where's David? That's why we drink, right? One thing is certain, we are headed towards this flashpoint, this paradigm shift, this day of reckoning. Because you see, we've spent the better part of human existence just getting to this point where technology and innovation coexist to allow for the population to grow. Major advancements in agriculture, medicine, manufacturing, and science have allowed for the carrying capacity of this earth to increase exponentially. Yet in many ways, we still convert our energy the same way we've been doing it since 1000 BC. We burn fossil fuels. And in 1000 BC, the world's population was one half of 1% of what it is today. So now, I'm not proclaiming that modern life and you know, where we are in human existence didn't need to happen or it was bad in some way, shape, or form. Far from it, actually. I personally enjoy the trappings of modern life. And modern life is growing at this extremely exponential, fast pace. You know, I don't even recognize some of the things that are happening you know, 20 years ago, much less even 10 years ago. But modern life has come at a cost. It took a lot, and I mean a lot of energy, to get the things that we have today, the items we used, the things we buy, the food we consume, all of those things needed a lot of energy to produce. And you know what? It also leaves a lot of waste. But to get us here, we did this. Relatively unchecked, the pace of human advancement was only limited by the pace which we could pump out enough energy to make things happen. We found resources. We extracted them with more and more efficient methods. We explored and surveyed every inch of the world looking for these resources. And you know what? The mantra sang true. Drill, baby, drill. But that mantra wasn't true for everybody. And now, people all over the world are starting to wake up. And they're starting to rise up. We're now beginning to embrace the idea that we got to change our current path, or that we will fall victim to what is widely known as the tragedy of the commons. The idea that we got to stop acting independently and protect and manage our resources because if we fail, we all fail. And yes, I said resource because, you know, at the end of the day, there's really only one resource that counts. So momentum and history will be on the side that chooses to protect that resource. A resource very eloquently described by even Pope Francis our common home. Maybe you see where I'm going with this. The commons is our common. It's every single common on the face of this earth, and there wouldn't be any greater tra tragedy than to lose our common home. Now we can't go backwards and turn away from progress. Now is time to redouble our efforts and band together to make that next great leap of human existence and to care for our common home. We have the means to make it happen, ladies and gentlemen. We can rebuild. We have the technology. We have the capability to make and create a better place, better, stronger, and cleaner. And now the question is, do we have the will? Are we all working together for a common goal? Are our leaders sending the right signals to everybody here? Uh, let me take this time to talk about what moves policymakers and leaders. There is no one solution. We want a diversified portfolio. 
We want to connect and modernize our grids. We want solutions that's going to be balanced technically, economically, environmentally, and culturally. We want innovative solutions, we, and we want to showcase that to the rest of the world. And lastly, we want solutions that are not only going to benefit consumers, but also producers. Producers like a utility or an independent power producer. It's a simple concept, everybody. It's win, win, and win again. So approach the state with these fundamental goals in mind, and you will get attention. And some of you here already have our attention. I personally have talked with, I don't know how many of you here today. Present it as such, and government will be your biggest advocate. We will be your biggest cheerleader. So now that I've talked about the what, where, when, and why, the question is now the how. Governance. Governance is the way that rules, norms, and actions are structured, regulated, and people are held accountable. And it's not quite as easy as it may seem. I mean, just take a look at what's happening nationally and even internationally. But you know what? In many ways, governance is how things get done. So, in order to move society along, the innovators and the early adopters need to convince the early majority and the late majority to move, to get off their asses. And you know what? The laggards, forget the laggards. They'll always be laggards. So when we get together at functions like this here at Verge, are we reaching out to that early majority and that late majority? Are we, in the words of Chairman Iwase, are we out there reaching out to that man or woman on the bus stop? And I look at this portion of the normal distribution curve, and I say there lies all of the momentum to get things done. But we can't convince the early and late majority to shift their own paradigm if we keep changing the landscape, or if the baseline keeps moving, or at the risk of offending people here, we keep on telling everybody, hey, look at me, I have the solutions, I am your salvation. That is not the way things get done. We won't win through argument, we will win by setting an example and taking action. So the opposite of tragedy is fortune. And the aversion of tragedy is success. And in the context of climate change and sustainability, fortune and success are not options. They're absolutes. They are, they, they are what needs to happen. Failure is not an option, everybody. There's way too much at risk. Last year, I stood before you and I and I asked, what kind of future were you going to leave for the next generation? And I said that the collective knowledge in this room could help Hawaii get and reach its 100% renewable goals. And you know what? I still believe that. But this year, the stakes are much higher. With everything that's going on in the world, our challenge is to be prepared for that sea change, be prepared for that paradigm shift that I think everyone here knows is coming. And we have the collective knowledge. Hawaii has the opportunity to be the model for the rest of the world, so let's not lose that opportunity, everyone. Now is the time where we need everybody here to start emerging as leaders and move everyone forward together. We need to own the problem in order to solve it. And it's about the collective. It's about the collective care of our planet, our common home. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>